Hi, I'm Patrick and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today we're gonna to check out a home charger that you can use on your Mach-E or other EVs. It's from Autel, it's here in this beautiful new like light blue color. So we're gonna take a look at it today, so let's go. So here it is, this is the new Autel charger that they sent us for this review. It's in this new like uh, bluish gray color, sort of looks like some of the Mach-E colors. And it has a lot of the same features that their previous chargers have had. This is a 50 amp hardwire version. You can also get a 40 amp version that uh, plugs in. So depending on what your situation is, one or the other might be more appropriate for you. If you are undecided, I would lean toward going with the hardwired version. Just less issues with those in the long run. And uh, Tom Malogny has done a whole video on this and how it's, you know, stats show that it's safer to have it hardwired than have a, a plug that can create some other issues. So this is hardwired uh, by also hardwiring it if you can. If your house supports it and you can go up to 50 amps, it means it charges faster as well, or charges your car faster. This one, uh, as you can tell, it has the holster right here so that you can basically plug it right into here to store the connector. They also sell one where the holster is separate. So you basically, this is flat and then you put the holster somewhere else. So it might be nice, you know, like if your uh, wiring is here, but you actually want your connector a little bit further down in the garage, you can put the holster down there. And what's sort of great is it is a 25 foot cable. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. I believe the limit on any of these types of chargers is 25 feet. Some of them are down to like 18 feet, a lot are 24. So it's really cool that this one has a, a 25 foot connector on it or a cable on it. Um, you'll see that there's some lights that are already uh, lit up. And this is because I already have it installed and powered up. The first one is just the power light. The second one is indicates that it's connected to uh, Wi-Fi. The next one is uh, the charging indicator light, and we'll get into that once we connect it to the car to charge. Then there's a Bluetooth light. So once you're in the app and you're connected to it, you can connect to it over Wi-Fi, but when you're connected to it with Bluetooth, there's a, a few extra things that you can connect to, or it's a little bit faster, you know, a little, little bit more features that way. And then this last one, that's where there's an RFID card reader, and it you can tap on it and initiate a charge. We're gonna give that a try. I'm not sure, I think my card that I use at work is an RFID card. So I'm gonna tap it and see if I can initiate a charge that way. And what that could be useful for is, say you have a townhome or somewhere where like your charger is outside or you don't, you know, other people have access to it. You don't want anybody just being able to plug in and uh, initiate a charge. So you can lock it down and say like, don't charge unless this RFID card is used and then tap on it and then you can charge. Uh, that might also be useful if like you have an Airbnb or a small business or something like that where you know you do wanna limit access to who is charging. So we're gonna give that a test as well. Before we get started, let me just uh, go over some other stuff with this. Uh, the fact that it is NEMA 4 rated, which basically means even though I have it mounted here in my garage, I could mount it outside. It'll survive in temperatures like well below zero, I believe negative 40 up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very durable um, to be out in the elements. Um, it'll handle rain with no issues. Now I do wanna say like 130 is a lot, you know, like even in Phoenix, it doesn't get that hot. But you gotta remember, you know, 110 degrees, but in direct sunlight, this will probably be a lot hotter than that. So if you can, it's still, if you're gonna have it in the sunlight, I would try to you know, get it in the shady side of the building or something like that, if, if at all possible. The, the cable is pretty rigid. Um, we're here in California, so we are not gonna be testing the cold weather use of the cable. Um, it is pretty stiff and it's about 70 degrees right now. So if it gets down a little bit colder, that might be something that, to consider, but for the most part, you know, if you're charging in a garage, it's something you won't have to ever have to worry about. The plug seems pretty darn good. Uh, it is plastic. This this lever here is plastic. It has a metal pin holding it in. And that's the lever, you know, like when you plug it into the car and then it latches in. So you will be using that a lot. It feels like it's pretty solid and sturdy. Um, 
I, I always wonder about those. That's like a weak point on any home charger. And if you hit it just right, it, it will break on any of them. But it feels like really solid comparing it to the one that came in the Mach-E. I believe this one feels a bit more solid and it isn't white. Cause that's one of the things that gets me is like, they make these uh, plugs white and then it's like just touching it, dragging it on the floor or whatever. It gets, it gets very dirty. So I like the fact that it's black, but it just feels pretty solid. We'll plug that back in for now. Anyways, that's an overview of sort of like just the actual physical part of this. I'm actually recording on my phone, so I need to figure out, I'll have to run get a GoPro so that I can rec you know, show you the app and show you what it's doing as we're doing a charge session. So let me uh, like reconfigure my setup and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, now I'm in the app. I have the GoPro set up so I can you know, record on the phone and show you what's on the screen here as I'm doing my screen recording. I'm just gonna go over it, you know, step by step, just, you know, explore it myself. I haven't really, you know, dug into this too much. I did, you know, have this already set up before I started recording. It's very easy to set up. You basically, it's just like, you know, setting up another, you know, like other apps and accounts or whatever. The, the key with the Autel app is that you have to like get the serial number and you can do that three ways. One, you could just like type it in. You can also scan a QR code on the side of the Autel uh, charger or in the manual there's like a QR code there um, as well as the like serial number and a, like a pin to verify that this is your Autel before you get started so fairly easy straightforward but let's just explore the app show you some of the features first of all we'll go into the account um, I'm going to blur out our address there but um, and our Wi-Fi connection so anyways Relatively you know, straightforward, it's showing you that I'm connected with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can set the max charge current. Right now at our current house, we just had solar installed. Um, this is a 50 amp charger, but I set it to 32 amps for now. And that's basically because of the system we we're waiting to do a panel upgrade. The max that I can do at home right now is 40 amps, which is not that big of a deal for us. Uh, like we went to LA and back and I was able to charge overnight last night um, with only using a 32 amp uh, Ford charger. So no big deal for us, but it's really nice that we have that 50 amp feature. I can't wait to get our panel upgrade and then we'll make full use of this. But what's really cool, like I said, is like you can um, set a the, the little switch inside. It's like a little dial. So you can set the max amperage in there so you can dial that down if you're using, if you're, you know, buy the hard wired one and then end up plugging it in, you definitely need to set it down because, you know, you don't want to exceed the max of your NEMA 1450 outlet. So um, you can set it hard in there and then that sets your max here as well. So I, I'm making it sound more complicated than it is, but you, there's a hardware limit that you can set in the device and then there's a software limit that you can adjust on the fly. But because I have it set to uh, 32 amps as the max in there, that's the limit here. Made it really complicated, but it's actually very simple. So I'm gonna hit cancel on that. Uh, you can have it so that it just auto starts. Your energy pricing. Now, one, one of the things that I had a complaint with the last time I looked at the Autel and that I've had with other chargers is that it has like a flat rate. This is how much your charging cost. And when it's trying to do the estimates, that's all it's able to do. With this one, uh, you can set like your high, medium, low, and then set the periods of the day for your charging plan. Um, so that's that's great so that you can manually go in and like for us, it's different prices overnight versus in the middle of the day. Our electricity here is very high. Um, you'll see here, um, the numbers are actually crazy. When we were in Colorado, it was like eight cents to charge overnight. Here it's about 31 cents because of the plan that we're on and we're getting ready to switch that again due to the solar. So anyways, but the, the what you should take away from this is that you can like get really good estimates of how much it's costing to charge your Mach-E or other EV using this charger if you use time of use. And if you don't use time of use, you can just set like a, a straight flat rate and that works as well. And of course you can change the currency that you wanted to do the estimates in. Now, for this purpose, I'm not gonna do a, a schedule. I just want it to charge while we, you know, I don't wanna to have to wait until midnight for this thing to charge or whatever. But 
you can set up charging schedules. So if your car doesn't support, uh, you know, setting its own schedule, you can set a schedule here in the in the app, and that'll prevent you from charging during the most expensive time of the day. So that's a really really good feature to have, and I'm I'm glad that they included it here. Now here's a little tip that I give people is like say. Like I, I'll usually set it in a Mach-E so it charges from midnight to 6 a.m. But because every once in a while, like I'll get a software update, it happens like every like maybe three or four months, the Mach-E will ignore my charging schedule and just start charging whenever. And I, it's usually like right after there's been a software update and the car gets confused or whatever. So the way I sort of like a double insurance to protect that is like instead of uh, having it charge at uh, midnight, I'll set a, a thing, uh, a schedule on the charger so that it won't be able to charge until 11.55 p.m. So if it does start charging early, it's only five minutes early. And then I have it stop at 6.05 a.m. And that way, if it continues to, continues to charge when it's not supposed to, it's only gonna do like an extra five minutes. So basically, long story short, you can do a schedule in the car on, on many EVs, but it's nice to have a, a backup schedule on, on the charger itself and make it just slightly bigger than the, the other, uh, the, the one on the car. And the reason I make it slightly bigger is like, I don't want the car to like try to charge and the charger's not ready and the car is like, oh no, there's, there's something wrong with the, the station. So just make it slightly bigger and you should be good to go. But like I said, we're not gonna do a charging schedule. We just wanna plug in and, and test it out. Uh, there's a, some other really cool features, like you can share it with family members. Like if you wanna, have, they have their own account so that you can track what they're doing with their car, you can do that. Um, you can add it to Siri or link Alexa. And that way you can sort of use voice commands with those to ask, you know, like what's the charger doing? How fast is it charging? Um, how long has it been charging? Not sure of all the details, um, but if you find that useful, you can do that. I'd rather just pull up the app, but it's nice to have that option. It'll give me all the info on the charger, so it's basically like all of the, the software versions, the rated power. Again, it, you can see it's rated up to 50 amps and 12 kilowatts. Um, one of the fastest out there, I think that's basically the fastest that you can buy until you get up to like the special ones that are like 80 amp uh, chargers. We'll go back. Firmware update. You can have it do automatic firmware updates. I'm gonna turn that on. You can reboot it and you can do a factory reset. So if you ever need to sell it, make sure you do your factory reset before you sell it. Um, that way, whoever's taking over the charger, they'll be able to link it to their account. If you don't do a factory reset, it's gonna be tied to your account and they're gonna to have to call Autel and explain and see if they can get them to release it for you. One thing you might wanna do is the RCD test. And basically the way this is described is it's an internal safety test. So you can, it's like if there's any voltage leakage, the charger should shut down. So this will test that and then power it down and then you'll have to unplug it or disconnect it and then plug it back in. If it's hardwired, this might be a, a bit more of a pain. So, uh, but it's a good idea to probably test that out at least once before you, you put it into use. And in account, there's a bunch of things here. Most of it's pretty obvious, but uh, one of the things that I'm you know, excited that they have in here is your charge history. So after we do some charges, it'll track the home charges that, uh, that we've done. It also has public charging. Um, I don't think there's any that are, will be connected and will show up in here, but like if you actually do uh, use an Autel charger out somewhere, it would probably show up in here as well. I think that's the, the purpose of this, but. I just want to track the home charging and see how that does. So uh, we're going to give that a try in a minute. Um, other stuff is like FAQ, bug report, feature suggestion. They have a, a really good Facebook group. Um, you can set up, this is where you set up your RFID card. I've already set one up. You basically just enter in the number that's on the RFID card. We'll see if that actually works. I'm not sure it, it, it accepted it and added it, but who knows. And then the map is like if you're trying to find other public charging. I'm not going to click on that because it's just going to show nothing around us except my home address. So um, we don't need to do that. But I think the next thing we need to do is like plug it in and get it charging. So let's do that.
All right, we're not getting out too much cable. Now I'm gonna plug it in and it's not gonna charge right away because the car has a schedule set so that it won't charge till midnight. So what I can do in the Ford app is go ahead and just say charge to 100%. And that should tell it to like ignore the schedule and start charging. Charge resumed by the vehicle. I can hear the, the air vents on the Mach-E uh, opening right now. It does that always test to make sure those can open to know if it can do cooling if it needs to. Okay, over here in the Autel app, I'm gonna click on charging and it's already given me 0.148 kilowatt hours. It's been charging for two minutes and 50 seconds, and it's already estimated the cost to be 11 cents. We're charging at an expensive time of day. And again, because we're limited because of our panel here, we're at 7.3 kilowatts of charging. And here's a neat one that I haven't seen before in other apps, is the charging curve. And uh, it's showing uh, like we went right up. We're at 31.4 amps. The voltage is 233.3 volts and it's flat and steady. And it's gonna probably give me that until I hit 100%. So um, as you can tell, it's fairly simple and easy to get this thing charging. Has lots of good info here. And then, um, you know, like I can control it with the app. So what's really cool is like if I hit stop, now I've hit, I've stopped the charging on the car by just hitting stop on the app. It's just came out, it says I charge about four minutes and cost about 17 uh, cents. And I'm gonna see if I can initiate a charge with the RFID card. So let me stop the camera. I'm gonna run and go get the one that I have and uh, see if we can get that to work. So a little bit of bad news. It did not work with what I thought was an RFID card. It's the card I used to get in and out of the building at work when I actually used to go to an office. So I thought I could use that to activate charging here. It did not work. You can order RFID cards. I think you can get them from Autel or you can get them from Amazon. I think you, you know, when I looked, it was like you had to buy like 10 of them or whatever, but it's very simple. Uh, here on the screen, it says charge via card. And uh, that's all you got to do is like activate that. And then what it does is it disables just plugging in and the car starts automatically. So um, once that's active, it looks like all you do is you tap over there and it'll start the charging. So it's, a, it's an extra step, but if you need that security, it's great. Now that uh, we finished our charge, let me go back and let me see, go back one more. Um, I want to go to charging history. So now you can see I haven't charged a bunch, but here's our charging history. And this is looking at it for June and it's showing like I did a couple of little charges and that's me like trying to get it to work down here. Uh, you'll see the first ones are, uh, the first one is zero kilowatts and then we charged a little bit and then I stopped it and then zero kilowatts. The zero kilowatts is when the charger started but the car was not ready to charge. So I had to go in and, and add that. So it's showing that we did four charges, a total of 14 minutes, cost us uh, 18 cents, and we used 0.29 kilowatt hours, and distance added, it should be a little bit more than that. Well, I guess it's figuring three miles per kilowatt hour or something like that. So we, and I did add that the Mustang Mach-E is the car that we're charging, so I think it's gonna try to calculate based on the actual car, um, and then CO2 saved, so. This is very, very minimally useful right now because we just did a couple of charges. But over the course of the month, it's really good data to have. And um, it also has like a log. Let's see if I can find the log again of all of those charging sessions. So if I want to see like um, why the, the, the charging stopped, uh, it'll tell me like it was stopped because of the schedule or like here, it was like charge suspended by vehicle. So that tells me, you know, something with the, the vehicle schedule could be off if, you know, I wasn't expecting it to stop. So um, lots of good info in the app. I really like the app overall. And just going back to the, the overall, you know, Autel charger, it's a great charging option, very solidly built by a very reputable company. And a little antidote about uh, Autel is like we visited them at CES or visited their booth at CES uh, in Las Vegas at the beginning of 2023. If you don't, don't know what CES is, it's like the, the world's largest consumer electronics show. 
Uh, it's being overtaken by EVs and EV-related technology. So there were a lot of uh, charging companies there. And it was really cool. Like we were interviewing uh, John Thomas from Autel. He's the chief operating officer. And during the interview, we got interrupted because somebody came over and started talking to him. And that happens a lot when we're doing interviews at trade shows. Turns out this guy was a competitor or an employee of a competitor and basically praised everything that Autel was doing, said, you know, he wanted to come check out the booth and meet Autel because they're doing some great things. And John literally talked to the, the young man and figured out what his specialty was for the competitor and almost pretty much offered him a job on the spot. So uh, I, I thought it, would, it illustrated a couple of things. You know, one, Autel is a recognized leader in the industry and they are involved in everything from the DC fast chargers down to these home chargers. They're coming out with new stuff all the time. They had stuff on display at CES showing that they're gonna be ready for vehicle to grid. Um, and it also showed that you know, they're willing to like jump on something like that and not afraid to like, hey, you need a job, let's let's talk and we'll, you know, it'd be cool to have you employed with us and not our competitor. So anyways, small antidote. Overall, again, it's like, I really like this charger. The app is very functional and useful. If you have a, a situation where you need to use RFID, that's uh, awesome. If you want a 40 amp version, they have that. You want this 50 amp version, this is great. If you want the holster in, the device, they have that, and they have the separate holster. So lots of flexibility, lots of options, good app, good support, great company. So we definitely uh, recommend Autel as one of the like top three chargers that we have tested and used and recommended. So um, it's one of, uh, I guess, Monkey Vlog's recommended chargers. So heard it from me first. So anyways, uh, Liv isn't here. She's uh, still doing the day job stuff while I'm out here in the garage filming. But I know that she would say, uh, let's see, what she would she say? I always mess this up. Whatever you drive, however you charge it, enjoy the ride. Bye.